We have Ty Pennington and Amy Goyer, and they're here to tell us about lots of things we can do for our home for caregiving. Guys, this is such an awesome opportunity. I'm so excited to speak with both of you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. So everyone must know both of you guys right now. They see it, they're like, how did you get this awesome interview? It's so neat to have you guys talking to our local people in the area. So can you tell me about how this partnership happened and what you guys are doing today? Well, AARP uh, is, I I serve as AARP's National Family and Caregiving Expert, and AARP has a a real emphasis on caregiving and making sure that um, we all have our homes be livable and comfortable as we're aging and that we can take care of ourselves. Three quarters of people want to stay in their homes as they age. And, you know, I know I certainly would want to, and my parents wanted to, and your mom wanted Mm -hmm. to. So uh, we reached out to Ty to see if he would talk with us a little about, you know, about tips for how, what are updates you can make to your home so it can be beautiful and age gracefully with you uh, as, as you're aging as well. Guys, I'm 38. I'm already ready to stay home all the time. So I <laughs> might need tips Excellent. too. Yeah. <laughs> Now's the time yeah. to start mm-hmm. making those updates well, before you right. need them. That's what you realize is that, you know, I mean, yes, we have our loved ones, our parents that are, are, are at the age that the house may not be working for them, but you also see the fact that, yeah, I understand why you want to put a ramp in. Like, yeah, I understand why you want to widen this bathroom, but especially for a loved one that's, that's hitting that, that age where things are becoming more difficult, you do start to, to see the changes that a house needs to go through to really work for them. And a lot of times it is putting in accessibility with a ramp or widening a bathroom or putting in a rolled in shower so they can have their independence, um, putting safety bars in so that they can sit and stand from the toilet so much easier. Even a riser pad makes a huge difference, oh. but they're little things, whether it's light switches that come on just from motion to texture, um, whether it's, you know, something that's more like my mom, which had a respiratory issue that we had to put in HEPA filters to make sure she got the clean air. You just sort of have to observe how uh, they're living in it and, and see what changes you're going to need to make for them to age gracefully in the house. Uh, because not every house is designed for us to age into. We're in Queens County right now, and the local area around us, it's a lot of old homes. I mean, very Mm -hmm. old historic homes. Are are there different challenges with that or things they can do uh, in historic districts? Well, you know, I'm doing this right now, too. I'm down in Alexandria in the D.C. area, and we're restoring a a, a hundred-year-old home. So I've been chatting with Ty about some of these things. And, you know, one of the biggest things is the entry into the home, because so many of these older homes have many steps up to get to, to them. And, you know, we've been talking about some of the different ways that you can get around that. Yeah. And and the thing is, a lot of these, you know, older homes like you're talking about can be very narrow and they're very steep. Right. And so your challenge is, is to either put in a chairlift or sometimes a ramp just to get in the front door. But if you're lucky enough that you have a garage, sometimes you've got to start thinking about maybe that ground level space becomes uh, a new living quarters for your 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 elderly uh, family member because they have so much easier access. I mean, my wife has already literally said, oh, look, the basement next door is like, I I think you're going to be there in 20 years. I'm like, wow, that's wonderful (laughs) to know that you're already thinking for the future. So, um, but I think it's something we all really need to think about. And you have to sort of look at your home with whatever is there now, what changes can happen that can really make it so much easier on your loved ones. Yeah, you know, one of the things in these older homes is the laundry is always in the basement, Mm. right? So that's one of the first things to think about because who wants your loved one going up and down the stairs carrying laundry baskets with clothes? So think about, okay, where can we put a washer and dryer on the main living floor or at least on the floor where the bedrooms are? Yeah. And right. it's about giving their independence so they can shower by themselves, they can do their laundry by themselves, maybe lowering countertops and shelves so that they can still be part of the kitchen as well, so that they're still, you know, an active family member. Right. And right now, it's very cold. We have probably people thinking of warmer weather. And Is there any, like, small solutions or quick solutions people could be doing right now in the winter that might be able to help? Well, one of the first things I always go to is the lighting. Mm -hmm. You can improve the lighting and put in brighter light bulbs. You can even, as Ty mentioned, that I love the motion sensor light Mm -hmm. bulbs or some of the other easy things. Yeah, and and, and honestly, too, remember, like, there's a lot of technology happening with uh, smart homes now. So let's face it, we also have to instruct them how to use the remote, not only on the TV, but at this point, you can raise and lower the temperature of your home. And so there's a lot of things that you can start to sort of 
teach uh, the older generation how to sort of live in their uh, their their old home in a new way is what I would say. Yeah, you can even just put a toilet seat riser on the toilet rather than putting in a, a whole new toilet. With a heated seat. Yeah, wow. yeah. Now, now you're t- I need that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's good in I'm this area. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> so if people, we're hearing lots of solutions and, and lots of things that we can do, but maybe they don't know where to start. So how does someone start or where can they go for more information? Well, you can go to ARP.org slash caregiving. We have lots of tips, tools. We have a whole section on care, caring at home if you're caring for loved ones at home or plan to. Um, we have, you know, tools about how to make your home livable um, over, the, over the ages. And we're going to be doing um, a webinar this evening. So be sure and join us. We're going to be live. We're going to be taking questions and talking a little bit more depth about all of these things. You can register at ARP.org slash caregiving so you guys have a very busy day obviously oh yeah yes <laughs> well guys i know you're very busy so i won't keep you much longer hopefully we get to bring you out to queens county and show you some of our old homes sometime now well, that'd it. be great <laughs> well thank you for joining us thank you so much for what you're doing and i hope everyone gets to check in tonight and watch you guys do your thing thanks so much thanks of course have a great day